The thing is, right, is that I look at it this way, you know, with the um, the um, sensuality of the African-American woman these days is going down. And the fact that they want to look like dudes these days, they want to be up with us and everything like that, it's hard to find a good black woman. Then on top of that, a good black man, it's like, He's ostracized in America, all right? A good black man looked down as a, you know, you know, oh, he's too nice. So he, no, you know, he's not man enough for me, you know. Even though, he, you know, I had a girl one, like I said before in my videos in the past, I had a girl one time who asked me, she couldn't date me because I didn't have a criminal record. Have a criminal record. And I, I'm sorry, baby, but I guess that won't. I guess you and I aren't meant to be, because I'll never have a criminal record. At least I can. You know, I will. And yes, you know, and you know that type of mentality. We live in, in today's society of with a post uh, love hip hop NBA wives mentality. And sadly, to say it's no longer. It's not just affecting our women. It's also affecting our young men. They start to act like with feminine mentalities too as well. And, you know, I want to get, when I started traveling, I seen to myself, I just got, me and my, my ex-wife, we broke up, we you know, longer together, we divorced, and, uh, you know, and I, I'm the type of man that needs a woman. There ain't no such thing as that, of a man that don't need no woman. Man, <laughs> let me tell you something, if a man that doesn't need a woman, is a, I'll tell you this right now, is a dead man. All right, it's just that simple. A woman will get you, will straight instruct you certain things about a man that only a woman can fix. That's why a woman is always behind a man. Okay? Because she still holds him up to some degree if he tries to fall back. She knows how to cook. Cook him correct. He ain't out there eating that garbage. She tries to check him when he comes out and he's smoking too much. Okay? And then he keeps him out from all these beds that he keeps jumping into. Uh, you know. Because a man will jump into a million beds if he, you know, the thing about it is you get two things. You can catch something, or you could catch a bullet in the ass too. I jump into a man's bed with his woman. And it's me, I know. Alright? So I know that I I knowing my weaknesses, knowing that I love women. Alright, I know I need to get, you know, at my age, I need to get me one woman to take care of me. Everything like that, but guess what? These African American women don't fit the bill anymore. And I don't, I don't bash African American women. I want African American women to realize why we're leaving, why we're getting our passports, why the good men are going, going to countries like Brazil, going to countries like um, the Colombia and stuff like that. Those women down there, they got the blueprint. My father gave me the blueprint. My father married his, his second wife, uh, who's from El Salvador. And they've been married 20 years now. All right, they have two kids together and everything like that. And this, despite a lot of things my father done shady, she's still with him, he's still taking care of him. And I really believe that had he not been, had she not been around, I would, my father would not be around either. Okay, she's care of Now he was fortunately for him, he met her in the States. Alright? He met her in the States. But taking that blueprint, I said to myself, be the fact that I was also married to a foreigner too. Alright? But I said, I'm gonna take this a little further. I'm gonna go real south. I'm gonna go to another continent. Alright? I'm gonna go all the way to Brazil. And I heard all these things about Brazil and everything like that. I finally decided I want to come down there. And I did all my research, everything I needed to know. And, you know, when I got down there, here's a country for the first time. You ever get someone who tells you, oh, this place is going to be like this, this place is going to be like that. And then get there expecting that it doesn't turn out that way. Brazil was fit the bill perfectly. It's everything that everybody said it was going to be. All right? And, you know, I fell in love with the culture and I fell in love with the women. When I got the experience, and then I got the experience, not just the beauty. These women 
are beautiful inside and out. Not ready to go to war with you and not ready to fight you on every word that come out your mouth and every that. They know, Brazilian women, they know the man is first and they respect the man. Okay, they respect. We're, we're not looking for slaves. We're not looking for Stratford wives or anything like that. We're looking for a woman that doesn't want to fight you on every little thing. Don't like on eggshells around, in other words. That's the way it was with me. I was afraid I'm walking on eggshells. I, I say I might do something wrong. Oh, this thing's going to go off. The things I say I might do something wrong, I might give a rose to a woman, she go off. You know, I'm like, Brazilian women, they appreciate everything you do for them, especially when you're a gentleman. Okay? They appreciate stuff like that. They appreciate you being there, taking them out to dinner, showing them a good time, you pulling the chair out for them. Stuff here you'll be called a simp for. Down there you praise for. I went to Brazil back in August of 2011. I just fell in love with it from day one. When I got put like this, when I got back to the States, I stayed down there for about three weeks. And when I got back to the States, when that plane landed in Charlotte, and then I had to go to Philadelphia from there, but when it landed in Charlotte, I felt so empty. I felt like, why am I here? Here, this is the country that I was born in. I know the language and everything like that, but I felt like I was so disconnected with this country after that trip. And I was like, you know what? I can't do this. I can't do this. I, yo, I need another airline ticket. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Set it up for yeah. Set it up for the end of the month. All right. Next month I was down there, and I kept coming down there again and again every other month. You know, I just got hooked. You seen the movie The Matrix, right? You see how it's set up to where we were always set up to believe certain things, right? And if we pulled out too soon, we'll fight for the Matrix to believe, you know, on something that, it, that really doesn't exist. All right, well, the, the United States is the exact same thing, okay? Right. Here in the U.S., we are taught everything is bad outside of the U.S. Uh, you know, countries like Brazil, third world. Countries like this and this and that. You don't want to go down there. You'll get killed. You'll get robbed. You'll get this. You'll get that. Oh, right, well, wait. Okay, well, I've been up here in the U.S. and I've been, I, I haven't been killed yet, but I've been robbed. I've been shot at and I even got cooked. I even got cooked a couple of times too. Thank God when the face, you know, in my time. But when I go, it, we always taught that the United States is the one all to be all. Because of that as black people, we are always taught that we stay in our neighborhoods. Really, that's, see, like I said, that's the Matrix mindset. These black men, that they would rather, they feel like they, they, they selling out the hood by leaving the hood. Exactly. This is the government. It's the government. Government on the hood. The government decide, you know what, we're going to tear the hood down? You think black folks going to stand there and fight them? No, they're going to tear it down. The Zion was the, was the place for all the free-minded people, and that's where they all lived at. The Zion is... Zion is anywhere you make home outside the matrix. Zion, for my, in my case, could be Brazil. Oh, like I said, you want to keep the money here in the United States. So yes, it is definitely a capitalism thing. That plays into it big time. It's also mental slavery, too. They can't tell you to buy something and you get out of the country. All right? You know, not to mention, it's also still that separate cutting us from all from our brothers and sisters. Brazil is the is the biggest concentration of Africans, African descent, all right, outside of Africa. Okay, outside of that. Not the United States, Brazil. When they go to a country like Brazil where it's 51% of the population is African descent, okay, and then they, you know, they try to division them up, oh well they're not really black. This mix this, this mix that. I'm sorry. If you got the same color skin as mine, if you got the same eyes as mine, and if I had hair, you would have the same color hair as mine. Okay? You make 
side of the language, all right? But you're black. I'm sorry. You know, it's what it is. Life started in Africa. Okay, I've been to, of course, um, the, um, the Sao Paulo. I would say Sao Paulo on my list is the top 10. But Sao Paulo is like being in New York. You're stepping away from the tropical side and you're going into the concrete jungle. Yeah. You know, their traffic is so bad that they got helicopter taxis. They got some huge buildings that the, the far as the eye can see. The nightlife in Sao Paulo is crazy. I mean, they got clubs all over the place. They are jamming all night all over the place, man. Yeah, I know. You know, so it's like being in New York, man. It's lively, crowded, you know, all over the place. And it's just live 24-7, just like New York is. You know, and everything. Yeah. Now, if you want to tone it down, you can go to a beach, um, you know, so like a, a, a beach community like, um, like Fort Laser. Fort Delays is up and coming. Right? They're trying to get themselves within the, the speakings of Rio, Sao Paulo. All right. I believe that's the fourth largest city in Brazil. All right. Mainly on the right there in northern Brazil, right on the um, right on the crust of the beach areas. All right. Very beautiful, it's just very new buildings they're building up. In fact, the property up there, they're building a lot of new property up there under $100,000. Okay, so it's US money. You can get something, I'm just saying under, you can get a whole lot more cheaper than that, you know? But yeah, that's the type of properties you can get up there. Um, Belo Horizonte is another place, you know, where it's, the property is pretty cheap, you know, six hours away from Rio, the state of Rio, and you know they're up and coming too. They sell a lot of property down there, a lot of old style houses, sort of like a, I would say, sort of like a European like style, you know, beautiful houses, you know, beautiful tropics, everything like that, stuff like that. You know, those are places that I would go outside of Rio. I'm gonna move, probably move. I'm looking at Fortaleza, but Fortaleza is too far away from Rio, and I, because I got a lot of business in Rio, I'm gonna have. A, I've, I've been looking at a place called um, Cop Come Name. Mm, excuse me, Cop Three. Okay, I've been looking at that and uh, Mecca All right, all those are about anywhere between 45 minutes to three hours away from Rio. And they are more or less away from the city. Property value goes lower when you get away from the city. See, up here, of course, up here in up here in the United States, property value goes higher when you get away from the city. Down there, property value goes lower when you get away from the city. Well, I want brothers to get be more progressive. Okay, a lot of brothers that come in the group and they say, you know, oh, you know, I want to go to Brazil, but it costs money. You know, I want to live in Brazil, but it costs money. And you know what it takes to stay in Brazil. See, the thing about it is, I don't care how many degrees you got. Hey, down there, it won't mean squat. Because it's more about not what you know, it's who you know. You go down there and you build relationships with the people. All right, you go down there, you know who to hook up with and everything like that, and you build the relationship with you try to keep it style and everything like that. Not to mention, you want the, right now, you want that US dollar following you. Right? I created a bunch of opportunities in my group where the money can follow them and not the money, and not them follow the money. All right, and you got the dollar following you down there in Brazil, and right now the US dollar is tripling the Brazilian heights. Right, you're living very 1%. Living very 1%. You could be making... 
if you're making a mere, let's just say you're making a mere $3,500 a month, US, and that $3,500 now becomes $12,000 a month. And if you're making $12,000 hey, a month, you're living very good. Very good. You can just about move anywhere in, anywhere in the whole country. Binary options is basically online trading. Right? There's a lot of online opportunities out there. Some of them good, some of them bad, some of them scammed. Okay. Binary option is something that's solid, right there that and just about anybody can do if they have the training and they have the drive to do it. Take a lot of money to get started. Okay. Oh, but you gotta you gotta put money out there to make money. Um, this, like I said, the, um, the type of indicators that we use and everything like that helps most most of um, our traders make anywhere between 70 to 80 percent of their trades successfully. All right, and if, you can, if you're getting an 80 percent or 70 percent or 80 percent win ratio, you're in the money. Profit. And this money is being made online. Okay, this money's being made online. You don't have to be here in the U.S. This money's being made online. You can transfer it to your checking account. Boom, you're in. Okay. You know, and the, there's people who are actually, like I said, the people are actually are day traders. And this is for real. This is something that you can do. Something that you got to train for. Something that you got to work for. And binary options is the first step towards day trading. Yes, you know, so that's what the, one of the main opportunities that I'm pushing out there for a lot of brothers who say, oh, I don't have the money, I want to move to Brazil, but I don't have the money for this and all that, you know, that. I'm giving them this option. You have to work for it and train for it. Yes. I'm eliminating all these students. Just to, just to get a passport and a visa and go down there and just check it out. See if the bug bites you, because the bug bit me. All right, the Brazilian bug bit me. But the thing about it is not only that, right? This is one thing I want to add to. All right, when I went down there, and a lot of people who seen my video, um, Zumba Party Part 4, my YouTube channel, all right, there was something that a young, that a man told me down there, one of the Brazilian brothers told me down there, that hit, hit me that was so profound. He said that Afro-Brazilian women are the highest single women down there. Not because they're, not, not, not like it is here in the US, it's the total opposite here in the US, black women are single here. It's that the men down there, been there, done that, I want a lighter, lighter skinned woman or something like that. And they'll go on and try to get the near white type of woman where black is, exactly, black is beautiful and always will be. Brazilian women are probably the most drop dead gorgeous women. So what they just saying, nah, average, yeah, yeah. We be like, damn, oh. God, man, she's better looking than what the fine, better looking than Holly Berry and all that stuff. At least she's everything mixed. The thing about it is we have the advantage. And we, because these women, they are basically, a lot of them are classy, a lot of them are respectful, and they respect the man. Beautiful, man. They hold themselves up. I got a girl told me one time she had four kids. Where? How? I don't see it. Beautiful, beautiful woman. Six pack stomach, I'm like you have four kids with a stomach like that. But anyway, the thing about it is, they're, they're the type of women that a good that a good man can definitely wife up. And like I said before, good men finish last here in Matrix USA. I, well, that, that's the story. Up to that point, then there's but there's a lot of women out there who don't have kids. A lot of them don't have kids. Waiting for it, waiting to get married and all that stuff. Marriage is down there is definitely something that is serious, that's taken seriously. In fact, they got some women up there that can get married as young as 16. All right? But.
think about it here in the U.S., marriage is not taken seriously anymore. They actually have a bunch of kids, you know, a bunch of bastard children, all that other stuff. And, and, you know, like I said, I don't know if I should have said that in the video, but, you know, like I said, man, the thing is, is that marriage is taken seriously in Brazil. All right. And these women are looking for a good husband. Not about green cards, not about the money, all, you know, at least all of it. They, they are looking for good black men. I said before in the video, um, good black men finish last, nice guys finish last in the US. They finish first in Brazil. And that's why I want a lot of brothers to take the black man's option and go on down to Brazil and check them out, see what they can get. Rock, always a pleasure, man. Anytime. Look, tell you, tell you people's right. I'm sorry. All right, it's fast now. I also even said I'm sorry publicly in my group. Yes, um, I tell you what. As far as the binary options, you can connect to the binary options at bbxoptions.com. All right. You can also look up my Facebook group at Afro-American Men versus Afro-Brazilian Women Would You Date on Facebook. Anytime now, brother. All right, Rock, you take care now, brother. Peace.